Welcome back to Sharks Happen. My name is Hal. I am your host going over shark attacks from the 1900s till present, mostly large sharks, and we're going to get started over in the Caribbean. We're going to go between the two islands of St. Kitts and Navy, and the date is January 9th of 2021. Brooke Toussaint, she is 26 years old. She's with six others, and they're doing some kayaking from one of the islands to the other. I don't know where this ended up. I know it's after nine o'clock in the morning. Don't know how far from shore, depth of water, don't even know the size of the shark. Uh, but she, she and some of the others, not all of them got in the water, but some of the kayakers decided to go in the water and get some swimming done when they got over by probably the other island, one of the islands, and they were out there swimming not very long, and Brooke was attacked by the shark. She was the only one that was attacked. It bit her in the left leg. She ended up with some defensive wounds, I think to her right hand, from hitting on the shark to get it to let go. Um, shark lets her go. She gets back into the kayak, and uh, they're rescued by somebody, you know, a patrol boat probably came out and picked them up to get her back in the land. Uh, the damage to her left leg was so great that she had to have it amputated uh, surgically when she got into the hospital. They, t they amputated just above the knee. I had seen that uh, her sister Jamie, I believe her name is Jamie, she had set up a GoFundMe to help pay for, because she was going to need a prosthetic and you know you have to go through all that physical therapy, so that's quite expensive and they were on their way pretty good to their goal. Uh, one of the stories I saw said they were looking to to raise a hundred thousand dollars, and that she had already raised thirty eight thousand of that. But that was a story from I think months ago. So uh, you know, hopefully she makes it to her target. She doesn't end up any financial dif difficulties because uh, getting over a shark attack alone is just bad enough. So that's our story of Brooke Tassant. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to put this down as as uh, not an attempt to predate. Okay, we head over to Hardwick Bay, and that is in Spencer Gulf. That's in Australia. The date, May 29th of 1999. Tony Donahue is 22 years old, and he and some friends are out at the beach, and he decides he's going to go do some uh, windsurfing shortly after noon, about 12.15. His friends say that he had left out and started windsurfing. The next time anybody sees him, a friend of his, Mr. Laurie, looks out, and he says that he saw him out at about 2.30, but he was so far out, he was just a speck. He was very small, so he had to be quite a ways out. And then by five o'clock, none of them had seen him return to the beach. So what they did was they did a little search of their own up and down the beach to make sure they didn't see anything of his or you know, that he had came up in the shore somewhere else. Uh, so they searched the beach really quick and they can't find him. So they go ahead and they immediately let the authorities know and now a search is launched. Um, it sounds like hours later on the same night, about two miles south of where he was last seen windsurfing, they found his board. Um, they didn't find the harness with the board. They found the board, uh, uh, like I said, two miles down. About two miles further south from there, they found the harness and it had markings of serrated teeth scratches from an attack. And then about a mile and a half, it sounds like down from the beach where he disappeared. So closer to where he disappeared, they ended up finding his wetsuit. And that also had the markings of an attack. Uh, the coroner ended up, they launched an inquest and the conclusion was this was an attack and that he died due to shark attack. Uh, they said it would be a great white shark by the scraping, scratching uh, V's that are in the clothing and on the gear that he had. So we're going to put this down as an attack and a predation by a great white shark. We're not sure of what size. Okay, now we're going to head over to Black's Beach. That's in Queensland, Australia. And the date on this is November 30th of 1984. Nicholas Boss is 16 years old. He is amongst a group of 120 students and nine teachers that are at this annual Christmas celebration where they all go down to the beach. They ended up, uh, the group ended up running 10 kayaks, I believe it is, 10 uh, jet skis, and a windsurf board. And there was about 60 students, 60 of the people were in the water when this took place. Um, on one of the catamarans was Nick Boss and three of his friends. And they're out there, they're not the most experienced captains of catamarans, it sounds like. And Nicholas Boss ends up falling out of the, out of the catamaran. So now the boys, the other three boys, are 
it's taken them a little while to bring it around because they're not, like I said, they're not that experienced. And Nicholas Boss, as they're turning the boat around, he's swimming to, sounds like they threw him a life jacket because he's swimming over to a life jacket and a tiger shark comes up and makes one pass at him and almost cuts him in two. So it sounds like it was a torso hit, torso hip area and you know, bit through most of the young teenager's body. Uh, by the time the other three boys got there, he was already unconscious. They pulled him up onto the boat, um, took him into shore. There was a doctor on shore, but there was absolutely nothing he could do. He said that he had lost a major amount of blood. Um, so Nicholas Boss ends up passing away. Um, they don't say what size tiger shark this is, um, you know, but it's got to be pretty big. You know, think 10, 12 footer. Uh, at least to be able to do that to somebody that almost bite them in half like that. It's got to be a pretty big one. Uh, so we're going to put Nicholas Boss down as an attack, not an attempt to predate fatality by a tiger shark. Okay, now we're going to head over to the Bahamas. We're going to go to Tahiti Beach, which is Obo K. The date on this is January 6th of 2015. Lacey Martin, she is 34 years old. Her and her husband, they're out doing some snorkeling. Uh, they're off their catamaran, so they're 120 yards from shore their boat is sitting and they swim around prior to four o'clock a while and then they get back on the catamaran. Um, it's not very deep water, it's six to eight feet deep where they're at. Like I said, 120 yards from shore and at about four o'clock or shortly before they get in the water again and they, they're swimming around again. Now Lacey's on one side of the catamaran and this is a 44 foot catamaran so it's probably pretty wide. She's on one side of it and her husband Britt is on the other. And she's swimming after, she said, a stingray, I believe it is. And suddenly she's grabbed by the, by the torso and shaken, not once, but twice. So it sounds like the shark bit her and shook her and then bit her again and shook her again. So this is what I'm getting from what I'm reading. And it quickly let go and went on its way. Well, she makes her way back to the boat. And when she gets near the boat, she calls over to her husband and says, I've been bitten by a shark. Now Britt, he had said that, she had said it so calmly that he did not think that she was serious. He thought she was joking. He swam around to her side of the boat and she was now making her way up the ladder onto the boat and he could see, he said he, she was missing half of her back. So the shark did some damage to her. Um, on her way up the ladder, she ended up passing out and fell back into the water. He got her up and got her into the boat and took her in to get her help. Uh, she ends up surviving this attack. She loses uh, flesh from her back, from her arm all the way down to her pelvis. And that's just a major, major injury for a really quick attack like that. It sounds like this was, you know, uh, seconds, you know, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and the attack's over. It's not one of these where the shark grabs you and takes you off. Really quick attack on her. Um, maybe the thing was in the area hunting and bit her because she was swimming after its food. They do like to eat those, so I don't know. But uh, she ends up getting in. She survives the attack. Um, going to have to go through, you know, probably a ton of skin grafts and a ton of recovery. But at least you have your life in that situation. They at first assumed that this was a tiger shark, but then they, when they uh, got her in, they got a tooth fragment. Um, out of her wounds and they said that this shark was either a bull shark, the upper tooth of a bull shark, or it was the upper tooth of an oceanic white tip. Uh, like I said before, a lot of these teeth in these sharks are similar to where, like the megalodon, you aren't going to be able to see a tooth and just say what shark it is. I mean, a great white shark is just a bigger tooth. It, it looks like a giant uh, Mako shark tooth. So the teeth look similar, it's just bigger. So that's the same thing with Megalodon to a white. And you know, it might look similar, but a uh, Mako and a white, when you're looking at their face, they don't look the same. So um, it's hard to tell by these teeth, shark to shark. So they narrowed it down to the two. I would say probably the bull shark because, uh, you know, six to eight feet of water, 120 yards from shore in the Bahamas. I don't know how often uh, they see oceanic white tips, uh, you know, in that shallow water, in that close to shore. They're usually farther out in, you know, deep sea, uh, at least 60, 50, 60 feet. 
So who knows which one it was, but she ended up getting pretty thrashed by the shark. I would say it was probably at least 10 feet to be able to just swing her around like that twice and do that kind of damage. Had to have a pretty big wide bite mark to be able to do so. And not only that, but it has to have some weight behind it to be able to thrash a person around like that. You can't really be lifted up by the mouth of a five foot shark and shaking around, not an adult human. That's not gonna happen, not even with a great white, I don't think so. Uh, had to be a pretty sizable shark. They don't know what size. Put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate. Uh, we just don't know what kind of shark, either a bull or an oceanic white tip. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Lake Huron. That's part of the Miami Lakes in Queensland, Australia. And the date on this, December 16th of 2002. Bo Martin, he is 23 years old, and he and a friend, David Dad, they decide uh, early afternoon, they're gonna swim across the lake and back. So the two of the boys, they jump in the water and they swim their way across and now they're making their way back. I don't know how far from shore, how deep the water is, um, but I do know that David Dad says they weren't playing around in the water, they weren't splashing around, they were doing a simple brush stroke and having a conversation with each other. By 2.30, it sounds like David Dad was a little bit ahead of Bo because he suddenly hears Bo scream and he turns around to look for him and he can't see him on the water so he swims back looking around. He can't see him, obviously doesn't see any pool of blood so he just can't find his buddy. So he swims back to shore and alerts authorities and they launch an immediate search. Didn't find anything of him for sounds like that day and if they searched the next day he still wasn't found because that happened on a Monday at 2.30 in the afternoon he disappeared. On Wednesday morning at four in the morning, the father, Bo's father told his mother he's gonna go out and he's gonna find his son's body. And he goes out and I think it was in a kayak and he's paddling around and sure enough, he runs into Bo's body. Um, he gets him up and out of the water. He ended up with his left leg was severed at the knee. So it took off the bottom of his leg and the coroner determined, now this was interesting to me, the coroner determined not only the bites, but when they happened, that he suffered three bites while he was alive. I don't understand how, how some coroners can make this determination and others, most, don't tell us a thing. Um, that kind of a thing is usually left up to like um, inquests that I see over in Australia, that's where you normally see that they say, okay, it was a shark attack, he was alive when he was attacked, or he was drowned and he wasn't. But here we have, uh, you know, as fact that he was bitten three times when he was still alive. And, uh, you know, he, he couldn't make it from his, from his wounds. Uh, they said that they thought this was a bull shark that did this attack. We're going to put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate by a bull shark. Um, until we hear anything further, it could have been a smaller bull shark. Uh, you could have a smaller shark, you know, go ahead and bite on a body. But normally, if you're a bigger bull shark and you do something like that, you're going to finish the job. So I'm not sure that that was a bull shark. They're not going by teeth fragments. They're just guessing, I think. So uh, we'll put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate, and I'm not gonna know what kind of shark. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Leftovers, a surf spot that is off the north shore of Oahu, Hawaii. The date on this is October 9th of 2015. Colin Cook, 25 years old, he is out doing some morning surfing. Um, sounds like he's by himself. He's 120, 100, 150 yards from shore, so somewhere in that area offshore. Six to eight foot deep water, and there's six foot waves and clear water that he's in. And he's waiting on a wave. He's sitting on the board, so he's sitting upright on the board waiting on a wave, and he sees bait fish suddenly jumping up out of the water. Shortly after that, he feels a blast to the bottom of the board, and something grabbed his leg and tug him into the water. I believe it's his left leg grabbed it and pulled him into the water. When he got into the water, he saw that he had a shark on his leg and used both of his hands to, to be able to fight the shark. So he's hitting on the shark, the shark finally releases and he surfaces. Uh, there was a gentleman, Kenny Bothorpe, that was 100 to 150 yards from him when the attack took place, saw it happen and immediately started paddling his way over. So as Chris, as, as Colin got up to the surface, he didn't have to wait very long until the paddleboarder got over, but 
that wasn't the end of things. The shark, as a paddleboarder got there, the shark is doing circles, tight circles around Colin now. So Colin is trying to get to the paddleboarder and the paddleboarder is trying to get him to him, but the shark is keeping them from being able to do that. So Kenny had to take his paddleboard or and hit the shark. And he hit it with the blade. So he hit it blade down to get it out of the way and was able to get the paddleboard close enough to where Colin said that he saw that he got close enough, so he just jumped up on his back. Um, he tried to climb up there, but both of his hands were shredded, so he couldn't use his hands at all to be able to climb up on something. Uh, but he, you know, jumped up there and jumped on his back and and held on to Kenny the whole way in. Uh, Kenny had him up on his back. There was extra weight on the board. The board is sinking down in the water and luckily one of those big waves came in and pushed him along into the, into the shore. Um, otherwise he would have had to probably swim him in because that board was going to eventually just sink due to the weight. Uh, so he gets him in. Uh, he ended up having his left leg severed low. So it was below the knee where it was severed, but there was damage obviously above there because they ended up surgically uh, amputating just above the knee. And he had very bad, I mean both of his hands had very bad uh, wounds to him, so much so that Kenny was surprised that he was able to hang on to him the whole way in like that because of the state of his hands. So, uh, you know, a tiger shark that got a hold of him, we're going to put it down as an attack, not an attempt to predate by a tiger shark. They said it was 12 feet long. Hey, now we're going to go back to 1954, and we're going off of Singapore, about 100 yards off of the shore, and about 20 yards, 20 feet deep water. Uh, it is very turbid water, and visibility is one to two feet. You got a Navy diver, he is down there, and he is retrieving bags of opium, packages of opium. Obviously, smugglers had dropped it in there, and he's retrieving them, giving them to the police. So the police are there, he's diving down, bringing up the opium for them, and one of the times he's down, he's attacked by a shark, and he's attacked by a shark brutally. Um, he ends up getting his out of the shark's mouth and gets himself to the surface. But from what I see, he pretty much passed away on the surface. He had a massive wound to his to his abdomen, to his buttocks, and to his thigh, and he did not make it. That was you know just a terrible attack. It, I can't tell which is worse to be on you know having a vacation, having a great time, doing what you love like surfers, and then being killed when you're out there, or being maimed where it just you know, you're never going to be the same afterwards or doing your job. Uh, they both seem to have, you know, I just can't get my mind around either one of them to where your, your great fun is ruined and your life has changed or your job just, you know, it's a hazardous job to begin with and you have all these hazards and he was wearing like a... a uh, closed circuit breather and things so you have all kinds of things that could go wrong but you don't normally have to worry about being eaten while you're at your job so <laughs> I can't tell which is worse maybe you can tell me in the comments which you think is worse it, you know being attacked when you're working or being attacked when you're out there having a good time um, I think both scenarios just suck but you know, the working thing, man, it sucks that to have a bad day at work. I remember when I was a machinist and I'd have a bad day. Oh, it was just awful. Not just for me. I'd make it bad for everybody around me. <laughs> so, and that's the truth. I, uh, you know, I'm very hard on myself with things like that. So um, I wanted to go over those. I'm not going to have a show tomorrow. We're going to have another show on Friday. Um, I'm going to be busy tomorrow, but Friday we'll have another show, and that'll conclude Shark Attack Week, and we'll pick up next Monday. Um, so we'll get four shows, Shark Attack shows this week. Uh, tomorrow I'm a little busy, but you know I'll be back uh, after tomorrow. I'll be back Friday, and then I'll be back Monday after that. So until then, if you go in that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.